Hey everyone, welcome back. Thought I'd do a quick little video around um, my initial thoughts on the DIY Powerwall and the Tesla Powerwall itself and currently what my setup is at home, um, just very quickly in the way of solar um, and what inverter I've currently got and uh, some thoughts around what I'm going to try and achieve and I suppose how I'm going to do it. Um, so I've got 4.8 kilowatts of solar on the roof. Um, that goes down to a uh, 5 kilowatt grid tie inverter. The um, solar panels are organized in two um, strings, um, 10 panels per string for the total of 4.8 kilowatts. Um, the grid tie inverter is a 5000 watt solar X uh, grid tie inverter. It's got a maximum of um, 20 amps per channel and it's um, a very a total maximum of 5200 watts. Um, it's actually turned out to be a really good inverter. Um, it's um, a really good cost point um, when compared to many other inverters that I was looking at at the time. So that's really just a little bit about um, my solar setup. And when I first um, got solar and I, I was looking at the different options around inverters. I was looking at the grid time inverters, I was looking at the hybrid inverters and I was looking at off-grid inverters. And for a cost point of view, um, grid time inverters is definitely cheaper and definitely the way to go. The um, I was also looking at the hybrid inverters. The probably the best one, the cheapest one at the time was the Solar X Hybrid. Um, but still, it's not a cheap inverter. It's still um, a two thousand or that was three thousand uh, six hundred or three thousand eight hundred somewhere around there. Um, plus, on top of that the um, inverter charger part of it for the DC side was also another 900 bucks. Um, the way that SolarX did their or does their hybrid inverters is that they've got uh, for their battery systems they've got um, uh, inverter or a charger per or as a modular um, stackable device which works out pretty well in the sense that if, one, if, if it goes bad uh, or if one of them goes bad, you can um, replace it and still uh, not have the whole system go down. So from a standpoint of hybrid inverters, um, where the charger um, is separated, um, it does make a, a pretty compelling um, reason to go that way versus, especially if you're um, reliant on using um, the DC power for nighttime use or throughout the day, maybe in, say, off-grid mode. Um, the other thing I looked at was uh, off-grid inverters. Now I know a lot of people are using, say, the off-grid inverters with um, their DIY uh, Tesla Powerwalls. Um, now I did have a look at that as a bit of an option when I first went with my solar setup, but I knew in the back of my head that the Tesla Powerwall was coming out and I knew that it connected into the DC side of a grid time inverter. Um, and I didn't really want to go down the route of a 48 volt system um, at the time it was more around lead acid batteries where nowadays it's um, obviously lithium ion with Tesla and Panasonic and those other manufacturers that are kind of those, those that te well this technology is coming on stream a lot more in 2016 um, it wasn't so much there in the end of kind of 2015 um, it's definitely coming out a lot more so um, that swayed my point, my um, decision more towards the just going grid tie without worrying about the say going hybrid or worrying about the uh, off grid inverters, because um, I really wasn't that interested in going lead acid. Um, so yeah, I ended up going with the grid tie inverter and um, with the idea of um, a Tesla power wall or making some kind of battery system. Um, what I also did was I, I did a bit of research around how the Tesla Powerwall works and just very quickly to recap um, for anyone that hasn't been keeping up to date Tesla Powerwall 350 volts to 400 and something volts um, and the um, the main point of it is that it can plug straight into a grid time or it is compatible with a grid time inverter and from a market point of view um, that's fantastic since majority of um, solar installs are grid tie um, based and the reason for that is for the low cost um, it doesn't cost very much only a couple only a few thousand dollars to, to put some solar panels up and a grid tie inverter uh, where it obviously costs a heck of a lot more to put uh, an off-grid inverter in, some batteries, um, while obviously people have 
batteries and, and it's not uncommon um, it's far more common um, for it to be grid tie um, and um, especially around Australia and New Zealand um, a lot of installs are um, just grid tie installs which is fantastic because it does make a bit of an impact or it does make quite a bit a big impact on the power bill so um, it's pretty much halves the power bill um, and it's a lot cheaper to install and convince obviously customers to go solar when you've when it's 10k less than say the um, the off-grid or the hybrid option um, so anyway coming back to the Tesla Powerwall um, the my initial thought is that it plugged directly into the grid tie inverter um, and which is fine because the grid tie inverter um, takes power from your solar panels normally a, a grid tie inverter that's over three kilowatts um, has a starting voltage of 150 volts and it goes all the way up to 550 volts or 500 volts um, so the Tesla Powerwall is on the higher range but it's well within range of the grid tie inverters um, uh, now the, 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 I suppose the, the key point here is that you can't, the way a grid tie inverter works um, fundamentally and very simply is that it wants to take, it only knows solar panels. It, the only thing it knows and the only thing it's ever known and the only thing it's designed for is to be compatible with solar panels. And realistically what it is designed to do is to turn as much of that solar or that DC power into AC power. Um, as uh, and as efficiently as possible. So, how what what? So the the problem is is that um, the first thing that you could do is that you can plug some batteries into the the DC side of your inverter. And I actually tried that. I connected up um, a 24 volt battery. I got a boost converter and um, I connected um, that up and put 80 volts into the DC side of my 5 kilowatt inverter. And what happened? Well, the light came on, and the DC inverter said waiting. Oh, sorry, the um, the grid tie inverter said waiting. And then I looked at the manual, and I read through the manual, and I was looking at it and thinking, oh, I actually need a hundred um, hundred volts for it to start um, uh, working with the um, the AC um, side of things before it actually sends power to the AC or starts converting the power. Um, which makes sense because um, if you've only got 80 watts, uh, 80 volts of power, it's it's not enough to actually run the whole system, and it's actually a turn-on voltage for my particular inverter. Um, so I ended up getting a DC to DC converter. I connected that up, turned it on, plugged it in, and yeah, 100 volts. Um, I, I got up to 98 volts on the DC to DC converter. The DC to D, a DC to DC converter. Um, had a maximum uh, output voltage of 80 volts because that's really the most common one and the one I chose was um, the one I was testing with was a 600 watt um, DC to DC boost converter now um, it got up to 98 volts and it still wouldn't turn my inverter on so I thought okay cool what I need is a, I need a, a bigger um, DC to DC converter or one that has a higher voltage um, on its output so I ended up after weeks trying to find a, a, a cheap -er, um, DC to DC boost converter ended up finding one it was a, went up to 120 volts and I think John's just reviewed it in his last couple of weeks um, on his channel I'm pretty sure it's John um, but the so the boost converter I got uh, 120 volts so I put that into the um, the DC side of my grid time inverter and it still wouldn't turn on. It, it said waiting, and I was like, oh cool, it's saying waiting, so now I waited, I waited two minutes, and I was thinking, geez, it should be turning on by now. So I, I, what I did was I checked the um, the manual and looked at the spec sheet, and I overlooked one key factor, is that for my grid time inverter, it needed 150 volts. It waited between 100 volts and 150 volts, and it needed 150 volts plus before it started um, sending power to the AC side. So um, my initial thought, and why I just mentioned this, was my initial thought was I could create my own battery bank, then what I could do is I could use a boost converter, or a DC to DC boost converter, and convert that up to whatever my inverter needed. The problem I've got is that um, my inverter needs 150 volts, and most, and pretty much all, grid tie inverters that are over 3 kilowatts require a minimum voltage of 150 volts. So, 
um, I should have really done more research but the the problem I'm going to have is that one I can't find a DC to DC um, converter that does over 120 volts for cheap um, you can find them but they're very expensive um, and um, they own it only solves a fraction of the problem so my idea around connecting some batteries to my five kilowatt inverter that I've already got which would be very similar to how the, te uh, the Tesla Powerwall worked kind of went out the window um, and the other issue you've got with a grid time inverter is that just very quickly and I'll just mention this is that if you've got a grid time inverter um, and a, a, a large one or a larger one then what the grid time inverter is as I said before its main purpose is is to turn as much solar into AC as possible or as much DC into AC as possible there's no limits there's no nothing else so what that means is that if you were to plug in um, 5 kilowatts or 10 kilowatts of battery power into your grid time inverter the first thing your grid time inverter is going to go uh, going to do is think holy crap it's just got sunny I'm going to try and turn as much of that power into AC as possible and this is the fundamental problem um, you need some way of limiting how much power can be drawn off your battery bank and to do that you need a DC to DC um, converter and you need one that can that supports one high voltage and two high current and that's where I suppose I got stuck and that's where it's, it's not an off-the-shelf product it's not something that you can easily do now what I've found is um, uh, from the Australian website or I'm pretty sure it's an Australian company um, a company called storage what they've done is they've created a product or pretty much partnered at the time uh, with um, with Tesla and um, what they did was they came up with a product their first product was with it was a storage and it was um, a product that sat in between the um, the Tesla power wall and the grid tie inverter and what it does is it, um, and I'll show you a photo, and what it does is it um, is pretty much a DC to DC converter and it limits how much DC current comes out of the Tesla Powerwall. Because from a from the grid tie inverter standpoint, the grid tie inverter is just, it is, very, it is quite complex obviously, but it's actually very simple. All it wants to do is turn that DC power into AC power. So you need some way of limiting it uh, when you plug batteries in. Now there's tons of videos on the internet that have um, that have people connecting their uh, 12 volt and 24 volt batteries up into 500 watt um, grid time inverters, um, Sun Tech or some the Sun five uh, Sun 500s, um, and there's a whole range of them um, that um, you can just obviously you plug in your 24 volt battery and you get AC out, um, and that's great. The only problem is is that when you start um, when you try and do that with a 3000 watt or plus or 5000 watt grid time inverter it's not that simple and it doesn't exactly work like that um, what you really need is that um, that limiter in between the system and that's what storage came out with um, another one that um, I'll also show you is um, is the Sunny Bay um, oh sorry Sunny Boy <laughs> um, is the Sunny Boy um, storage 2.5. I think the reason it's too, uh, called 2.5 is because it has a, um, a limit of around 2500 watts. Um, so what this unit does is it sits in between here on the system and um, just forgetting, just forget this inverter here, let's just say this is a good time, or it is just an, an average good time inverter or any uh, off the shelf grid time inverter what it does is the sunny boy storage uh, storage 2.5 sits in the middle here and it regulates the power or the the dc power that comes into the inverter it regulates it between going to the batteries between um, how much can come out of the battery bank into the grid time inverter to then turn into ac um, so you need some kind of limiter to limit how much power comes out of the batteries and pretty much there's two products in the latest version of the um, the storage um, inverter 
they've created it as the, the bottom half of the inverter when this when this actually first came out there was two separate products but now they've um the latest product line has it in one and if i flick across to here which is actually that um, storage inverter but opened up the old one has nothing pretty much in the bottom of it the new one has this dc to dc um converter and dc to dc um limiter on it so what it's doing is that it's limiting the power from the the battery bank here which is obviously the tesla power wall into the inverter so that the inverter will only invert what the house is currently using because the last thing you want to do is plug in your um, your battery bank whether it be the tesla power wall or anything else um, the last thing you want it to do is plug that in i've got a five kilowatt inverter so it's going to take five kilowatts of power out of my battery bank um, that 10 kilowatt battery bank is going to last two hours um, which is obviously completely pointless um, so I either, I've either got two options one I get a small grid time inverter um, or option two which is the better option which is to limit how much power comes out of the batteries and limit it based upon how much power the house is currently consuming and if you can match those two those two things then you've got a really good system and that's pretty much what the sunny boy and the um, the storage um, um, systems do so um, so taking those two things into consideration um, I really came back to the thoughts well I've still got my grid time inverter yes I can't use my five kilowatt grid time inverter easily for uh, with a battery connected to it not unless I obviously buy one the Tesla Powerwall at 350 volts and two by the probably the best product to use would be the sunny boy so would be the sunny boy um to to do the limiting in which case that's a lot of money um so this is where the tesla power wall and this is where the diy um well the diy version of the tesla power wall really came in um now i'm going to go down the same approach um i'm going to use the grid time inverter but I'm not going to use my 5 kilowatt grid time inverter, I'm going to use a 2 kilowatt grid time inverter with a limiter. 